Okay, welcome back to our first meeting. We should have paid the welcome back Potter's Hall. In a year. It's been exactly one year. <laughs> and welcome to the Township of Springfield, County of Union, State of New Jersey, meeting for March 9th, 2021. This meeting is being held in accordance with public laws of 1975. Chapter 231, an adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by a notice sent to the Star Ledger, the local source, and posted in the main lobby of the municipal building and on the township website. Please join us with David Penna of American Legion 228 as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. If we can please have a moment of silence for all of our service members stationed overseas and at home. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we have a roll call, please. Mayor Weber. Here. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Present. Committeeman Capadice. Here. Committeewoman Du Bois. Here. Committeeman Huber. Present. How are we all feeling? Feeling good. Good. good to be back. Good to be back, right? Good to I don't know any of these people up here. Not right? <laughs> I don't know any of them. I was so comfortable in Zoom and I didn't recognize Alex got a haircut. He left on his own. It's still, it's still. It needs another one. It needs another one. Chris is growing. Chris is growing. I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I, I'm so. I don't, I don't know if I can adequately uh, tell everybody what it means to be back here. I, I, I didn't like the Zoom. Uh, it, it's, it's, it is what it is. This is where we need to be. Try and teaching kindergarten. I'm on telling it. you. So. Uh, sure. Thank you guys, especially for being here and uh, everybody watching at home. We're going to do proclamation and announcements first. First, we have Commander Jerry Gebauer from American Legion Post 228. Presentation of a 50-year award to Don Auer. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Township Committee for allowing us for this opportunity. You know, every organization likes to have members who are involved and who stay with the organization. And through my tenure as commander of Post 228 in Springfield, I've had three people, three members, who have had an award for being members for 50 years. You may remember Ray Schramm, Donald Schwert, and tonight I'd like to make a presentation to our third members who make it for 50 years, and that is Don Hour. <laughs> Don has been a, you know, a very long member of the post, and he's had almost every position imaginable. You know, a, a position of uh, commander, Vice Commander, and most recently, he's been our finance officer. But Don's also been a resident of Springfield for over 50 years. Wow. And he's also quite involved in his church. You know, he's a deacon in the First Presbyterian Church. I think he's a trustee as well. So Don is really an example of a really good citizen for Springfield to have. And I'm glad that this, I could make this presentation to you. I would like to thank the Township for the recognition that they give me, but more importantly, the veterans. Veterans who have served and served honorably this town, this country. I think of them quite often. Many of them I remember from the Legion, where I've been a member 50 years, who are not around anymore to discuss the situations that they encountered in the lifetime that they spent in the service. And it was a lifetime because whatever those years, two years, three years, four years, five years, you learn lessons. And so for a lifetime, and you learn sympathy 
an understanding of situations that would only come with the background that we had. Again, I thank you for this recognition, and I appreciate it, and I give that thanks for all that. It's not just myself. I'm sure that they appreciate this recognition too. And to Commander Jerry, I thank him for selecting me out, selecting me out. Thank you. Well, we thank want to you. thank you for your service. <clears throat> I just wanted to hold up. One I want on. to thank you for your service, not only to our country, but to Springfield. It's appreciated. And I'm grateful that you can be here tonight and we're back to see you in person. And, and thank you. So thank you so much. It's appreciated. They don't make them like you three anymore. <laughs> Hopefully they start making them again soon like that. But boy, oh, boy. That's uh, we don't see that often anymore. Thank you, guys. Springfield Recreation Department will be offering a series of meet and greets with the Easter Bunny on Saturday afternoon, April 3rd at Chisholm Park. The rain location is going to be in the community center if it does rain. Bring your own baskets for egg giveaways, your own cameras for photos with the Easter Bunny. Time slots will be soon available for pre-registration on Community Pass. COVID-19 protocols will be in place, which is masks and hand sanitizer and social distancing, so on. More details to follow. <coughs> now we have a presentation from Ed Galante, our tax assessor, and the revaluation update. Hi, Ed. Hi. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. Tell, tell us what, what we got in store for us with this, please. Um, well, first of all, good evening, everybody. Uh, Ed Galanti, Tax Assessor, Springfield. Um, you may all recall that the Union County Board of Taxation gave us an order to reval all our assessments in town uh, for tax purposes uh, to be completed for tax year 21. Uh, and we were well on our way to completing that uh, as of about June of last year, and then the pandemic hit and we had to, had to shut it down. Um, the reval company has informed me that um, towards the end of this month and through April, we're going to be sending out letters to all residents um, for the purpose of trying to accomplish the interior inspections. All the outside is done. Um, the, we have come up with three options for people. You can do the traditional call, have somebody come out and inspect your house. Uh, personally, you know, or you can answer a questionnaire, which is pretty in-depth, or we even have the ability to do a, uh, a Zoom tour of your property, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, while this is going on, <clears throat> um, which will probably take into most of the summer, um, other people in the company will be developing land formulas from all the sales that have occurred in the sampling period and putting the assessments together. Um, we're going to be looking at, at sales up to October 1st of this year. Um, I, at that point in time, uh, at some point, we're going to be sending out value letters and we will give uh, everybody the option of coming in to speak with a representative of the company about their assessments, if they have any concerns about it or think it's too high, too low, whatever. And I think um, we certainly have enough time to get this job uh, done for tax year 22. If there's unforeseen problems uh, with this pandemic, uh, we may have to get another extension, but I'm hoping that doesn't happen. <clears throat> it looks like it's not going to happen. Ed, when do we have to get this back to the county bar? When's our drop dead date? Well, uh, the statutory date to file the list is January 10th. Uh, but um, I'm sure if we needed it, we could get an extension from the county. Mm -hmm. But I'm not anticipating that. That's really all I have to say. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be sure to happy to answer them. Mr. Mayor, man. In the, yeah, please. We, we got a bunch of them. In the, in the letter, I'd like you to also say to the people of the town that if you refuse to let them in, it's going to be evaluated 
the highest in your neighborhood. So they realize that they have the opportunity, if they don't want to fill out the form, they don't want to do this. You know, some people say, oh, I do those laws of approval. I don't want to come to my house. And it happens. I know it happens. I just think we should put in a letter. If you don't, you're going to be assessed at the highest value in your neighborhood. I mean, right? Actually, we uh, have a copy of the law attached when it comes to that report. Okay. So that, that spells it out. I, I just want to make sure that people realize that. No, I understand. And they come out Saturday, right? They said they would come out on Saturday to, uh, if, because my wife and I work. So, I mean, Saturday. I'm sure they'll be available for Saturday. If you want somebody from the company to come to your house, they'll, they'll be available. <coughs> All right. Um, thank you. Um, you said that all of this is going to be explained in a letter. How do you believe that residents get to choose one of those three options that you uh, presented? The traditional way, the questionnaire, the Zoom? By making a phone call. Simple as that. They can call the company, tell them what they want to do, okay. and they'll be advised um, as to when somebody will be at their, at their door. Okay. They will have a mask on. Um, the letter states that they will ask that the residents also have a mask on while they're inside. And the interior inspection doesn't really take that long. Uh, it's a walk through to see the condition. Um, you know, the condition of a property is very important if you're going to value it, so we, we want to see the inside. I have two more questions. Uh, let's say they pick the questionnaire, they answer, you said it was very detailed, they answer one through 20 and they're like, oh my God, this is so many questions, just come to my house. Can they change their option if they oh, want sure. to? Okay, and the appeal process that you, not that I'm going to ask you to go through it, but the appeal process that you explained the first time you made the presentation, is that all the same? Well, first we have a, a sort of a, um, a, a little appeal process with, with the company themselves. If, if you get your assessment and you're concerned that it's not <clears throat> right, right, you can make an appointment to discuss with them how they came up with that number. Okay. And normally, I was in the revalve business for years, uh, they will have every sale that we've used to show people, this is what the houses are selling for in your neighborhood, they're all split levers in your neighborhood, or they're all capes, or whatever they are. Right. And uh, based on the condition of your house, and the size of your house, and where it's located, you and, and based on these sales, you should expect to get something similar. Okay. And they're all going to be, and again, just to reiterate, just to make sure, they're all going to be dressed in the same attire that they were the first time out they're going to have the shirts they have the, kind of a uniform the uniform as we yes. discussed previously so there's no mistaking who these people are when they start and they'll have id cool. and of course they'll be able to the police will have all their new id again all right and if residents want to call the police just to just to check to verify the person at their door they, they can do that Good. Well, and thank you on, on to chris's i don't mean to interrupt but um, we're going to let people know they're doing uh, Rose Avenue section next week. I'm mean, just doing that, you know, Monday and through that. And then they're doing, you know, Henshaw another day, you know, whatever day it is. I want to make sure that people know because he's going to be getting phone calls and Linda's going to be getting phone calls all day long. Well, they're not going to knock arbitrarily at doors. <clears throat> no, no. First, the letter will You're going to know they're coming. Okay. You scheduled it. Right. What, right. What, what happens if you just. Don't read the letter or just neglect it. What's the process then? Or is the company going to follow up at some point? People they're, discard the letter and they're going to value your house. House at the ledge. So is this well, uh, one and done, or is there before, like a second follow-up? Before they do that, we're going to we're going to give uh, one final attempt. We will have a list. Of everybody that is not because if I recall, yeah, you, the last send time. out another letter saying you know it's your last chance. Got you. So, because if, if I recall, there was like going to be like two or three attempts. The first n normally knocked once, knocked again, final notice. So there'll be like a one or it's two letters. It's going to be a little different now. Because yeah. Of, because of the pandemic. I mean, normally, under normal circumstances, we would knock on the door, try to do the interior inspection, and then go outside and measure the outside of the house. If you weren't home, we would measure the outside of the house, leave a note that we were there, and, and we're going to come back another day. At a certain time, if you miss us again, uh, we'll leave another note exactly. saying, please call us at this number to arrange something convenient for you. That can't really happen Absolutely. anymore like that. Um, so that's where the new letter comes in. You send out the letter. They have three options. They make their choice. 
And frankly, I think most people are going to pick the questionnaire. No, I, I, I think so. But say you neglect it or don't open it, you know, uh, uh, especially. Well, then they'll, they'll get a little. Well, is there a follow-up? Again, and, you know, that, what more can you do? No, no, yeah. So I, I was just wondering if there's going to be one or then we're going to two follow-up. Which is probably not the very And then lastly, you said this will take into the summer. When do you expect the value value letters to hit? Uh, probably in November. Cool. And just to follow from Chris's point, uh, you're going to have, if the yeah. resident wants to appeal to the company, that's the first step. If they're unhappy with that, you can still appeal to the county tax to the county taxation. Right. And if you don't get the result you want from them, you can file for the tax board in New Jersey. Um, I'm just trying to process this questionnaire right now. <laughs> What? This questionnaire. I'm trying to uh, questionnaire. So we're just going on, and I'm not complaining about it. But they've agreed to let people go on, just answering questions without a visual inspection or anything. If people don't want to let us in because of the pandemic fears, uh, I don't know what else we can do. Yeah. No, but uh, the state has agreed to this. The state or the, the county has agreed to this. To this questionnaires or I don't think they care one way or the other. They don't they care one way. They just want to get it done. done. Yeah. They just want it done. Okay. That's fine then. Right. As, as long as you know, we're good with that then. Thank All you. Right. That's it. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your time. We'll put the info on the website again. And we should yeah. clip this part of the meeting and put it up as a separate piece so that people. I think we have a, a, yeah. a like a, a web page is what I'm trying to. Yeah. What are those about. things? Um, that, the that, that lays it out. I've heard of that. As long as, make, <laughs> as long as we make sure the info is on the website too. All right. Yes. Sure. Uh, I just want everybody to know that this process um, it is really nothing to be afraid of. Uh, the only thing we're trying to do is to change the assessments, which reflect values of 1986. Mm -hmm to today's values. And so, of course, our rateable base, instead of being a billion, 100,000, is gonna, is gonna go up to three billion something. And what does that mean? That means the tax rate's gonna come down to about a third of what it is now. The, the, the real reason for a revaluation is to make sure that everybody's paying their fair share uh, based on the value of the property. Because things over years change. Uh, what, might have been a very expensive, popular neighborhood 30 years ago, may not be anymore. So, and they, those people could be overpaying. So we want to just get the right values on the property based on today's values, wherever that may be in town, and uh, let the chips fall where they may. That's it. Thank right. you. Thank you. <coughs> now we're gonna move on to public comment on agenda items only public comment on agenda items only seeing none <coughs> let's go to the administrator's Mayor. report Mayor, excuse me uh, yes we have we, we do have that slight delay oh we have a 30 Social second media. delay sorry right all right so what we have is because we're trying three different forms here we're trying uh, Facebook we're trying YouTube we're trying live we've got phones so we do have a 30 second delay right now in between what I speak you know we're talking up up here and by the time it gets to YouTube so um, we have time to you can time. sing if you'd like to get up that <laughs> mic John I mean if anybody wants to get up there That's for a second I would have brought cups I could have done You're something we, we, we are going to need entertainment for 30 seconds I heard Linda can dance <laughs> <laughs> Linda's not even paying attention to right I'm now. trying to, people are saying they can't hear people talking what they oh. have, so I'm trying to. Oh, no. Oh, you know, you really. Can, can well, we crank up the volume know. a little bit, or? It's, it's up now? So that's oh. what I'm trying to figure out. They have okay. To. I'll yell, don't worry. All right. Let's, uh, still good. seeing none, I'm good now. Clear. Let's move on to the administrator's report. Mr. John Basigo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I wanted to touch first on recreation because we had some questions about camps for this summer. This is a very tentative and somewhat based on camp option structure and registration fees as opposed to what ultimately may be offered at the pool as well as existing and future uh, guidance 
by the state. So I'll kind of give you a rundown on what we are planning on. Uh, at camps at the Springfield Community Pool, we're currently planning on a morning camp, likely to end prior to lunchtime. Camps at Chisholm at the Community Center, currently planning for a morning camp, outdoor only, with limited indoor use, likely to end prior to lunchtime. Enrollment will be very limited. We're also currently working with a diverse group of existing and new program partners to offer at least one afternoon camp each week, such as gaming, science experiments, drawings, cartooning, cooking, baking, fashion design, and others. The week of August 16th, one week morning multi-sport camp. The week of August 23rd, one week morning soccer camp. Camps at Irwin Park, the week of August 30th, one week morning tennis camp. Those again are tentative, we'll update you as we go along, but I know that question came up, so we're just trying to give you somewhat of a heads up. Touch on DPW if I may, hopefully the snow is finally over. We've cleaned all equipment and stored it for next year. Potholes are being repaired on a regular basis and the larger repairs will follow as the weather warms. We can't get asphalt out right now and put that down, it's too cold at the moment. Um, we are also opening our parks and prepping all of our sports field and our supervisors are busy formulating our road projects for 2021. On the recycling side, we are preparing tonnage and clean communities report. They are due later this year in order to receive our grants. I'd like to touch on our developments that are going on. The Larkin building on the corner of Church Mall. Sheetrock is being installed as we speak. Uh, the casting that goes on the front of the building, the, uh, the Battle of Springfield, will actually be raised tomorrow at 9 a.m. Everyone is welcome if they'd like to see that going into place. We should have power by the end of the next week into the building, and then the elevator will be worked on right after that. So Larkin's building, they're making tremendous progress there. We're moving along very well. On our Gomes project across the street, the footings have been done for the pillars that go in the center. They're complete. The building drawings were dropped off the other day. They'll be reviewed, and early next week, they should be either approved or whatever deficiencies we find will be addressed. If we look at the redevelopment agreement, they have 30 months from their final approvals. That should be starting April 5th is when the final approvals should be out. So they have 30 months from that date to complete the building, just so everybody's aware. Uh, steel has begun to arrive. There were a couple of truckloads there. What they're planning on doing is doing two stories first on the Caldwell side and then working their way across. So once the steel starts going, the building will start taking shape very quickly. On our SACS project, demo is 90% complete. So, uh, the site will be cleaned within the next three or four weeks. All of the rubble and things that you see on the site will all be carted away. We have a pre-con meeting with SACS probably within three weeks. And site work will begin on 4-1. The first townhome permit should be May, June, and the main building should be by midsummer. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention, we are considering at the moment, we had a phone call from a pop-up testing company that would possibly like to go to the pool and offer free COVID testing. We haven't, we're still discussing that with our township attorney to make sure we got all the I's dotted and the T's crossed first, but we'll keep you abreast of that as we go along in the next several days, hopefully. Uh, and I think that was the, the highlights that I had at the moment. Are there any questions, comments, concerns? On recreation. Yes. I got a couple calls. The park on Colonial, and I don't know the name of it. Okay. I, you, you guys, you did a lot of work to it. Trivet. Yeah. Trivet. Trivet. Okay, Trivet. Um, they still have yellow tape around everything, and the kids are afraid to go on whatever you put in there. I don't know. Okay. Um, it's, it might be done, it might not. I just want, you know, like I will find out and let you know first thing in the morning. Okay. Or I'll let you know actually tonight. I'll make a phone call when right, I get well, done. I mean, and you know, I figured Adam would have been here, but, you know. With no problem. Um, and the only thing with the camp is, I, I, I don't know if I talked to you about it. The camp at the pool, people are saying they'd much rather have, like, from 9 o'clock in the morning to 3 in the afternoon, a full day of camp. Just rather, like, if you're working, you don't have to worry about picking up and going here, going there. I know it, Adam said it's a lot. I don't know if it could be done. 
I think the issue right now is, and I'm sure John will correct me if I'm wrong, if he knows, is the capacity limits. You can't run the pool and have adults there for the pool with the kids with the capacities as they are, because they haven't changed from last year just yet. Yeah. So they, yeah, can't, well, yeah. they can't advertise a full day. If things move in a positive direction and the state changes capacity limits, I think that would change, but you can't plan for a full day and then take it away from people, whereas you can plan yeah. for a half day and then increase it as we get closer, right? Or if I if I can check on that for you, I'll get back to both of you in the morning. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then the only thing that's going to happen, we got to make sure the building is big enough that it rains. Because if it rains, the kids go inside. And that's the thing, too. That's the big, you know, they can go inside, they can use the exercise room, they can use that big meeting room, you know, there's, there's space in there, but I want to make sure that everything's taken care of with that. Got you. I don't know if it could be handled because I guess bathrooms would be a concern, so we'd have to think of porta potties, but if we get stuck in a situation where we have to do like half day and everything, and could we think about, I know we talked about like doing like little mini things at the parks in town, but I don't know if we would ever do that. But what if we did like a rotating thing, like where the first week we did something at Trivet Park and then the next week we did something at another park where we either brought in a private company or we did it with our rec program where we did a half day so or half day multi sports camp at Trivet. And then that way it's in everybody's neighborhood. So every kid gets an opportunity for a couple of weeks. I don't know if it would be beneficial or not, but. I, we, I think at this point almost anything is yeah right just to give kids can look into it to do something yeah are you are you talking about like um maybe we have so, lo, uh, like an organized organized activity yes for like, like two weeks park. at one yeah. camp then next week we'll float for a well, two-week session at one park like trivet park two weeks at henshaw two weeks, right so it floats through every neighborhood but we staff it so it's actually organized it gives kids an opportunity to possibly have a job, and it gives kids an opportunity to get out and do something organized. And if, but we get it in neighborhoods, so if kids need to walk, they can go. And if you, and, if, and based on the success or attendance of this year, yeah, maybe the following summer yeah. we could have it at every park. Possibly, or yeah, or yeah, but so, just, just trying to think outside the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think. I know that in, in my in my neighborhood, I think I think kids would be jumping at. The like we could do a basketball one at Henshaw for the younger kids because the hoops are not so right. high. At Trivet, we could do a soccer one. Like you could rotate, but would have an organized activity for two weeks at a time, so we don't have to staff every single park. It could be rotated. Sounds. I like that idea. We had it years ago in Springfield. Every park we used to. Oh yeah, we used to right. do that too. But yeah. yeah. You know. So yeah, maybe we used to I just thought of it when you were talking. So I don't know. Okay. I mean, it's not. A, you know, listen. I mean, I I don't know what you you we we'd put a. Uh, a container there to hold various sporting gang uh, yeah. you know, yeah, the boxes there. Yeah, you know, yeah. soccer balls and yeah. baseball and everything. Box there, so we could get a gang. And again, some of it's going to be guided by whatever guidelines we get. There. Exactly. Right. See but just stuff. an idea as a maybe another. Yep. I guess my vision is to get kids outside as much as possible whenever we can for at least the next. Yeah. You know, because Open they've the been box. so penned up for so long yeah. and so stressed out that it would be great. If, okay. if we could provide those opportunities somehow. Okay. Good idea. That'd okay. Be cool. All right. I'll report back to you on that. Thank you. We, oh, Scott, we're going to have a bid update. <clears throat> Scott Seidel. Hello, sir. How are you? Hey, Scott, I didn't recognize you. <laughs> You're limping a little bit. Uh oh. Mm, don't you hurt yourself. <laughs> Too late. Tough getting old, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Uh, Mike tried to call in, but he wasn't able to, so I'll give you a, a brief report on the bid. Okay. Uh, this past week, we met with uh, a new business coming into town, Cream Truck. Yes. Uh, Cream Truck. Yes. yes, we saw that. I saw that. Uh, they'll be uh, operating soon. You sign up with them, and they bring ice cream to you. How is the ice cream? Excellent. <laughs> I say it's very good. It was very good. So, yeah. uh, Mike Claire ordered the mic. <laughs> and uh, he enjoyed it, and I just got you off as vanilla, but it was nice. Like, and uh, they were showed us, they gave us all two in the place. They showed us the ice cream with the butter fat and how they make it. And it's <laughs> really, a, and the trucks are all, you know, new and how they outfit them. And basically, uh, you sign up online with their company. You'll get a text. We're going to be in your neighborhood between 4 and 5 o'clock today. What do you want? <laughs> you get online. You order all the, your ice cream. You pay for it online. And then they drive the truck, you get a message, hey, we'll be there in five minutes, go outside, and they make the soft ice cream for you right there. So it's not like pre-made before they get there, they're doing it right there. And uh, and you get it, it's all fresh, and have all the ingredients, and 
with LED signboards on the truck, and if you were having an event, they can put your logo on it, or they can play your music at the event, and it's really pretty versatile. It's a very interesting business model. Where are they taking up shop at over there? 30 Hillside Ave. Okay. In, in the back of the building, they got a big garage bay, which I think they have three trucks, we're probably going to hold four or five. Okay. And uh, that's where their headquarters is at. Of. And I did ask you, what happens to your, you know, service, you know, you serve in a family, three kids walk up, they want ice cream, they can deal with that. Thing. Perfect. So it's interesting. interesting. And, and events are not their big thing, it's the neighborhood. Uh, it was uh, very interesting, and uh, there'll be a little blurb in the Patriot this week, I think, about it, and then we'll probably do a ribbon cutting maybe the following month. And that's exciting that we've got an ice cream trucks again here. Yep. I mean, uh, we haven't <laughs> had them in 40 years, 50 years, whatever. And now we've got a company. <laughs> yeah, now we got a uh, conglomerate of ice cream trucks here. It's great. Uh, what else? So oh, uh, the bid is going to be working on a video for seniors to update them on businesses and the companies in town. Uh, that's one of the projects we're working on. Uh, John talked about the Washington project. I, I'll just mention that the sculpture of the freeze is going up on the building. It, it's really interesting because that depicts the Battle of Springfield and it's kind of facing where that happened because that was on the uh, steps of the Presbyterian Church. That's cool. And I don't, uh, almost not quite 20 years ago, we had Tom Fleming, the author who wrote the book, speak in that church about the Battle of Springfield. And that was a really moving, interesting thing to have him there read it with all the knowledge he had. So having that having that there I think is really cool, really really a nice thing for the center of town. It was a great uh, touch that he did that. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, we're gonna be uh, the bid will be uh, reaching out to other Mars Avenue property owners to meet with them and discuss uh, redevelopment or if they were interested in selling properties uh, to try and put developers and uh, together with uh, someone who might want to sell. Uh, now that redevelopment is starting to take hold and downtown uh, Springfield will change rather radically I think in the next year or so uh, you know some of these other property owners who have waited 50 years for this to happen will finally see it really is reality and it is happening uh, restaurants are very happy to start to see some warmer weather uh, they see this as a great opportunity to get out and uh, people will come out increase their businesses they can start to thrive uh, they're starting to see an increase in, uh, in people coming out <coughs> the Chamber of Commerce will be supporting the uh, town's egg hunt in April. And I know we're looking for sponsors, such as Adam Lee, additional sponsors. If anybody has any uh, interest in sponsoring it, they can reach out to me uh, through the Patriot, info at FreeFieldPatriot.com. And that is our bid update. Take any questions if anyone has anything. Um, I just... wanted to add one thing. We, we are extending the outdoor dining for our restaurants. Perfect. Right. Okay. To uh, November, I think it's November 1st or November, yes. yes. Right. The only, be done tonight. The only thing, John, I want to check, I and mean, we might have it on the books. Uh, I don't want vapor, any vapor, the you know, thing the kids are smoking now, on Morris Avenue, anything around schools, anything like that. If we have to, and Craig, you can check the ordinances, we can put it on, out on 22. I don't want anything on the Morris Avenue. The new store is coming. You know what I mean? The, the smoking and we'll look into it. that stuff. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So you're talking about um, vape shops. Vape shops. The, whatever, the whatever. shops or the conduct itself? Or yeah. both I don't. The, the, the selling of it. Okay. I don't want anything on Mars Avenue, especially around the school, Caldwell and that. But I think well, they sell those at like seven. They sell them everywhere. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think. We'll, yeah. we'll, so, we'll look into the extent yeah. to which yeah. the what we can do. I mean, there are some stores regulate. that are like focused on yeah. it, but I think they I sell wanna, them everywhere, unfortunately. Wanna, we, we might be preempted in ter from regulating that, but we'll look mm -hmm. into it. Okay. Thank you. Rich, one other thing, if I may, because you asked. The tape at uh, Trivet, that's where the old playground equipment was. The tape is still there. After we install the seepage tank and perform restoration on the area, then we'll remove the yellow tape. The seepage tank will help with the, the uh, we're getting puddling of water okay. there. So we're trying to get that taken away. And Chris, you are, you're familiar they're, with that. They're putting two 1,000 gallon storage containers underground there to remove the water. So sure. it, it, if you go back there, uh, went back there a week ago, yeah. it was a lake from okay. the middle all the way back. Um, so they were originally going to do one tank. They've decided to do two tanks, and we were just waiting for a little bit of warmer weather. Should be going in within the next okay, week or two. Next couple yeah. weeks. Yep. All right. Thank you. No problem. Thanks. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Uh,
All right. Um, let's move on to finance and pay some bills. All right. Deputy I, Mayor Kaiser. I will make a motion to adopt uh, for payroll and invoices for the period of February 24th through March 9th, 2021, in the amount of $4,460,671.36. I second. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Min Capities? Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois? Yes. Committee Min Huber? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Reports. Um, I make a motion to adopt the regular meeting minutes of February 9th, 2021, as emailed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Moving on to new business, ordinances on the second reading. Uh, this will be the uh, second and final reading for ordinance 202103. This ordinance permits businesses within the township to obtain approval for the display of temporary outdoor signs on their property in light of COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to approve on second reading ordinance 202103 as read by Madam Clerk and publicized in local source March 18, 2021. Second. Any public comment? Discussion? We have a, we have well, a we, certain we, size that they can use. They can't yes. there. And, right? Mayor, before we, before we go into discussion, if we're still in the public 30 comment, second delay, right? Have that same delay. Sorry. I, I don't know well, if that's sorry. Right. <laughs> All right. 30 second delay on public comment. You know, at my age, we fall asleep in 30 seconds. <laughs> Phone is not ringing right now. We do have. Uh, we have all. We've got carrier pigeon. If a bird flies, we got to give him a second to drop yeah, off hey, the question. Hey Chris, why don't you, before you start up again, just say the number over. Okay. You know, this way, people, if they can't see it on their. We're gonna TV. get a bunch of prank calls, probably for my kids. No. Anybody watching right now, the number to call in if you have any questions is nine seven three. Two three two four 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 two. That's nine seven three two three two four 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 two. And we will be accepting your questions during the public comment portions of this meeting. And you can also call on Jen Law. We'll do a cameo for the right price. She'll call you back for like <laughs> birthdays, holidays. I wish we could get a camera back there, too. <laughs> no, I, Mr. Mayor, I've been looking at the clock since you read the number for the first time, and we're almost at 30 seconds. All right. So we're going to we wait to see if we have anything. Can we put a shot clock above that door? You're good yeah. to move on. All right. So if we don't have a – do we have any discussion? Well, can I answer Rich's question? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, we have restrictions on size in there, total size. They have to come in and bring it in to get a permit for it. So it's restricted. We also are allowing them to put the like the A-frame sandwich yeah, kind I saw that. Yeah, out front. That. Those also, but again, restricted by size and where they're allowed to put it. Okay. So yes, it is restricted. Reason this is being done is there are several buildings that house several businesses, and we don't, you know, because of what places that were shut down over the year. At least this gives uh, passerbys a chance to understand uh, and see that their business or you know these businesses are back in for a while. This will not be a permanent thing, but we will do everything we can possibly to help them during this time. Uh, move on to a roll call vote. Committee Min Capides. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ordinance 202104, which is also a second and final reading. Bond ordinance to authorize the making of various public improvements and the acquisition of new additional or replacement equipment and machinery, new communication and signal, signal systems equipment, and new automotive vehicles, including original apparatus and equipment in by and for the Township of Springfield, County of Union, New Jersey, to appropriate the sum of $1,539,000 to pay the costs thereof, to appropriate capital fund balance, to make a down payment, to authorize the issuance of bonds, to finance such appropriation, and to provide for the issuance of bond anticipation notes in the anticipation of the issuance of such bonds. Woo! Oh, there's one long sentence. 
Can you repeat that, please? <laughs> <laughs> I will make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2021-04 as read by Madam Clerk with a publication in the local source on March 18th, 2021. I second the ordinance read by Madam Clerk for publication local source March 18th, 2021. And we will go to public comment and we will have that 30 second, 30 30 30 second delay. Well, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, while yes. we have these 30 seconds, the reason we are waiting 30, 30 seconds is there is a 30 second delay in our broadcast. The reason I say that is I didn't want to steal Mr. Mayor's thunder, but this is actually our first meeting that we are broadcasting live. Um, usually it's taped and aired later, but obviously right now this, this is our first meeting that we're airing live as it happens on our local channel. Perfect timing, look at that. You were sure. meant for radio and TV. <laughs> I, got, I got a face for it too, people tell me that. Public comment, I don't see any. Discussion. Do we have any discussion on this? So I'm just want to explain it. We're yeah, these are various items people. that we have to provide capital for. And we're looking at various things. In other words, in this, if you look at the ordinance, it's road curbing sidewalks that we're doing. There is acquisition of automobile automobile vehicles. Um, there's also there's a dump truck in there for DPW that we need. Uh, just reading through what else is in there. There's some extrication equipment for the fire department. There is uh, some other vehicles also for police and fire in there. <coughs> Various improvements to public buildings and property. So it's all of our capital for the year. Came to roughly a million and a half. Sure. It did not include new Cadillacs for all of us? I no, it did that not. Um, but it does, it, it is, uh, you know, I think we experience uh, during the storms, I think we saw what uh, having new equipment does for us and our response times and everything else. So, yeah. And I will mention, Mr. Mayor, we are going to put the equipment that we're replacing on gov deals. So we'll report back and let you know what we actually got for all the used equipment that we put on. We'll actually get back probably a pretty good buck. So it'll help offset the cost. So you're saying if you have a dream of owning a dump truck, <laughs> you this, this is your be, opportunity. This may be your opportunity. Well, I'm good with that because you know what? I think that dump truck was another one. I think that was another one that was uh, over a decade old. Or, or they are. Anything that we're replacing is is mm -hmm. seeing yep. the better days for sure. All right. Um, roll call vote, please. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committeeman Capades. Yes. Committeewoman Du Bois. Yes. Committeeman Huber. Yes. yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Okay. And this is, these next ordinances are first readings. Ordinance 202106. This ordinance amends the Township Code at Chapter 7 to supplement the Township's traffic reg regulation governing intersections. Oh, sorry. I would like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 202106 on first reading. As read by Madam Clerk, the publication local source March 18, 2021, with a final hearing on April 13, 2021. Second. Discussion. Up there. Um, this is just going to be a stop sign on Rose Avenue at the intersection of Salter and Rose. That's correct. That's it's up it. already. Yep, that's it. But, it. but it can't be enforced until we do this. Because people ask me about it, I said, I don't know. The you know, neighbors came to me and said, why do we have a stop sign down there? I, I've lived there for 40 some odd years. I said, I didn't know anything about it. Okay. You know, as, as we're getting busier at this point, we're just trying other, you know. Yeah, no, no. I didn't slow everything you know. down. And okay. So it's, it, that's all it is. People now. Is one sign, Salter and Rose, with the sign on Rose. Yes. Uh, no other discussion. Roll call vote, please. Committee Min Capades. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Okay. Ordinance 202107. This ordinance amends components of the police department's promotional policies and procedures for the ranks of sergeant and lieutenant. Chris. Sorry, I'm not uh <laughs> Not, not on it tonight. <laughs> I, I would like to make a motion to approve ordinance 202107 as read by Madam Clerk. 
with publication in the local source March 18, 2021, with a final hearing on April 13, 2021. Second. All right. Uh, discussion. I, I will say that right now this is only making um, the policy and the ordinance to become aligned at this point. Um, well, there's nothing else really. We are an outside source to get it, to have the test and all that given. Right? That has nothing to do with this. It's just the policy and the ordinance weren't exactly oh, totally okay. together. No, this is just making the two of them mesh and that's it. We, there's okay. really nothing else uh, more elaborate involved than that. That's all. all right, no problem. Roll call vote. Committeeman Capitis. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Woman Dubois. Yes. Committeeman Huber. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Ordinance 202108. This ordinance amends Chapter 35 Land Use to amend regulations pertaining to accessory structures in non residential zones, generators, and equipment installations in single family districts and height and location of fences. I move to adopt ordinance 2021-08 as read by Madam <coughs> Clark. <coughs> and public, but, uh, sorry, publicized in the local source March 18, 2021 with a final hearing April 13, 2021. <coughs> Discussion? Anybody have any questions on it? Sure. Nope. Nope, no. All right. Roll call vote, please. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Committee Man Uber? Yes. Committee Man Capitis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? <laughs> yes. Mayor no, Weber? Yes. Ordinance 202109. This ordinance amends the Township Code at Chapter 7 to modify and supplement the Township's traffic regulations governing parking time limits. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 202109 as read by Madam Clerk for publication in the local source March 18, 2021, with final hearing on April 13th. Second. <coughs> Discussion? Anybody? Any questions on it? Nope. All right. Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Committee Man Capitis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Committee Man Huber? Yes. Mayor <coughs> Weber? Yes. Okay, and ordinance 2021-10. This ordinance extends the effective period of ordinance 202014, which authorizes restaurants to establish and operate approved temporary dining areas during the during COVID-19. Um, I, Mr. Mayor, I would like to make a motion to approve ordinance 2021-10, as read by Madam Clerk. For publication in the local source March 18, 2021, with final hearing on April 13, 2021. Second. Any discussion on this one? No. Just no. that uh, we're, exactly. we're still continuing to do everything that we can, anything and everything that we can to help our local businesses and uh, whatever you can do to help on uh, the public's end, we would certainly appreciate uh, here in town. Absolutely. 100%. Discussion. Uh, sorry, roll call vote. Committee Man Capitis? Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser? Yes. Committee Woman Dubois? Yes. Committee Man Uber? Yes. Mayor Webb? Yes. All right, now we're going to move on to resolutions. Um, are we, we're pulling. We will go through a consent agenda, let people know if you want to pull. Okay. Um, Resolution 2021-78. 2021 20-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-81-81. 20-
Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Committee Man Cafferty's. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Committee yes. Man Huber. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Thanks. Right. Right. Mr. Jones, you have uh, to read it first. Okay. No, well, actually, if if you would permit me before Ms. Donnie yeah. reads it. Oh, I, I, um, I just want to explain to the people what. Uh, yeah. But on that note, um, I would like before she reads it i would like to make a motion if i could to table this resolution uh as chair of the administration committee i would like the opportunity to ask this candidate some questions okay. as as the future public information right. officer i just wanted to explain what about yeah yeah, could, okay. yeah absolutely. And i respect you for that you know i just i but i just wanted to have her read it and then we'd have to retract it yeah. but you could yeah. obviously Explain to everybody what it is if you want. I just no. I'll second. I'll second his motion to table it. Okay. Roll, vote. roll call vote on. It. Okay. This is the roll call to table uh, 20, 21, 82. Yes. Eighty one. Eighty one. Eighty one. Yep. Sorry. Uh, committee Min Capitis. Yes. Committee Min Huber. Yes. Committee Woman Du Bois. Yes. Deputy Mayor Kaiser. Yes. Mayor Webb. Yes. Thank you very much, okay. uh, my colleagues up here. Obviously, it's a very important position, and I appreciate your patience. Absolutely. Um, oh, one, one more thing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. 85. Um, is that a woman we're hiring as a part time laborer in the public work? First time? Or I, I quit that after the. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. She is the young lady that was our cleaning person at Chisholm. She will now be cleaning Chisholm and we'll use her at the library and various okay, other, that's maybe good. in town hall. So she's okay. agreed to come on board with the township as opposed to working for the company she was working for. Okay. I, it, uh, it worked out for us. Yes, it worked out for us very good. Financially, it worked out very good. Better. Works out okay. better for her also. Yeah, it works yeah. out better for everybody to, to, to cut out the other one. Okay. Uh, correspondence. We have Westfield Ordinance 2209, adopting the South Avenue re re Redevelopment Project public hearing, which will be held on March 9th at 8.30. And we also have Cranford Ordinances 2021-03, 2021-04, and 2021-06 on land development and stormwater management public hearing on March 30th at 8 p.m. So now we're going to go on to public comment on any governmental issue. Um, and we have a few people here uh who wants to go first right. mike mike Just let's go please come on speak up speak into the microphone so the people at home can hear you Absolutely. oh and before he begins uh, mr mayor if you wouldn't yes. mind just saying the number one more time oh i'm sorry yeah absolutely nine seven three two three two four 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 two that's nine seven three two three two four 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 two for any public comment during the comment portions of this meeting, which is right now. We got a 30 second delay also, but I guess as we talk, it'll catch up with it okay. as it goes on. Hello, Michael. Happy New Year. Hello, sir. Happy New Year, you too. <laughs> I just want to know, is that mask uh, legit? <laughs> it's good, it is. You sure? Yes, all right away. Add to this, Mike. I was wondering, uh, uh, Michael Furchie, 139 Hillside Avenue. Thank you. I was wondering if you could waste a couple of minutes to discuss this um, the PFAS issue at the, uh, at the Springfield well. Um, Chris called, I uh, reached out to some people and he got something cleared up. I apologize for the, uh, the number in my uh, statement was wrong. Okay, and I apologize. I know we had exchanged some text. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. Um, but uh, I had the 30,000 number because on the same night we voted 10,000 for the Sachs property okay. and 20,000 for the uh, filtration system at the water company. Okay. So I had 30,000 in my head and that's, that's what came out. All right. Also, I didn't know that a year on to this, the filtration system was not active yet. But the question that I, my concern wasn't about the 20,000 really, or if it was 30,000, it, it was about other things. For instance, um, my original question to you, three of you guys, and I hope I didn't violate any, uh, that's why I only sent it out to three of you. I 
Yeah, no, it was all individual. No, you were, no, you were individual. I'm just bringing it up on my phone now. Um, but my question was, is New Jersey American going to sue um, the, uh, the people who put this into the environment, the, uh, the manufacturers, because other utilities around the country are already suing the manufacturers, 3M, and I think the other one is um, might be DuPont and, and some other uh, manufacturers. Because this, in, in the future, is going to bring on costs and possibly, uh, you know, damages to uh, to people's health, and you know, this could turn out to be a big deal. As as it is turning out to be, it's a, it's a big deal already. So, my my the real question that I want to know is: Is New Jersey American going to get on the right side of this and uh, and sue the manufacturers like? Uh, PA American Water Company already did another 22 lawsuits. I understand. It. Do you do you know if anybody on, on any of these lawsuits has that, have any of them been settled yet, or, or are they still no, all? These are, this is all. It's all brand new, right? Up. This is all going to have uh, you know blow up to a head. Uh, I'm sure pretty soon well, because well, you can't. Well, we'll just check that out. I mean, I, we don't. I don't know everything that's going on about it. Yeah, we can see if we can get an American Water I representative Mr. here. I asked Mr. Dad if we might have standing since um, they're discharging into our water rights, into, into, you know, they're discharging into our sanitary sewer system, into the, the portion that we pay for. Uh, and right. I know Mr. Polito told you it's zero, uh, 0 0.02, right. but that's the overall number, Chris. It's 10% of what we bought from Barbara. That's, right. that's, a, that's a big number. No, I know. You know, just to give you an idea, it's twice as much as the entire Saks property. Right. That's 240 uh, units. You know, so it, it's a big deal. It's a, it's a, it's a huge number. And you were also told that it was temporary. And I have the packet here. And you guys are welcome to look at it. And Mr. Dowd has the head sheet. Um, there's nowhere in that in that DWA that says that it's temporary. Is it temporary just because? They're not going to be using 20,000 a day. That's the case with all the TWAs. Uh, SAC, the SACS the 240 units, they have 10,000, right? That doesn't mean that they're going to use 10,000 a day. Right. So you, you can't call theirs temporary either. It, right. Because they're not. There's no such thing as a TWA uh, temporary. It's, it's there. They have 20,000. They could, they could dump 20,000 a day if they wanted to forever. Right. There's nowhere in that document that it says temporary. So whoever told you that it's a temporary thing every time they backwash, that, that's not accurate at all, not even close to being accurate. And the other question that I have regarding that is when they do backwash, what are they going to do? Where does that water go? Does that go to, to the authority? Because if it does, then the authority has an issue with uh, you. you uh, because all the filtration systems, no matter what it is, ionization, carbon, or whatever, they all have fouling. So that means just like your, your, uh, your sand filter on your pool, right. you have to backwash it when it gets dirty. Right. So what do you do with the backwash? You dump it out to your lawn. But then again, it's only, you know, it's only muck from your right. pool. Right. It's not a deadly chemical. So are, you gonna, are they going to dump it on site? What are they going to do with this, uh, with this uh, fouling? issue you know those are things that we have to know because they're either going to wind up in our well back in our well or they're going to wind up with the authority either way we have some point some sort of force to, to deal with and i don't think it's right that's why i'm urging you to put some pressure on them to sue somebody because this is going to be a big deal no thanks and i if, if i may Mr. yes please May, I, I agree uh and i agree with you and we appreciate, or I, I don't want to speak for everybody up here, but I'm, I'm sure I could. We, we certainly appreciate all the updates that you've given us and, and the clarity and the transparency you've given us. Obviously, your, your breadth of knowledge of this goes a lot deeper than, than ours does, but let's continually keep the lines of communication open. Keep us updated. We'll look into everything that, that you, you put across our desk, and we'll stay proactive on this and, and, and fight to get the answers we need and urge the people that we need to urge do the right thing.
we'll see if we can get them here at, the, at a meeting for us and see what we can answer. Yeah, yeah. just to get some clarification on, on, on right. how this is all going to go. Fair enough. I think I have that guy's card because they did come to a meeting originally, did, right? you remember. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they came yeah. a, a year yeah. ago. Yeah. And he so went out for quite a few minutes, if you remember, John, uh -huh. about how it wasn't a big deal. It was only 70 parts per trillion. But, beep, 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 beep. but they don't know what the number is, Scott, Chris. <clears throat> right. They have no idea. 70 or 108, they don't know what is safe. They can't say the 70 parts per trillion is safe. Even one molecule of that stuff might, might cause you some kind of damage. And everybody's different. You know, it might hurt me, it might not do anything to you. So, you know, like everything else. But yep. this, the, uh, I'm just concerned that you guys are aware of what's going to go on here and, you know, and try to safeguard us economically and financially and whatever else comes to, uh, to fruition. Thank you. But uh, keep an eye on it. We'll do. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Next, let's let's move on to baseball and softball. Ooh, yay! All right. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Justin Conlon. I'm the president of Springfield's uh, youth baseball organization. I want to thank the committee for the opportunity to speak this evening. So. Uh, I'm appearing tonight uh, on behalf of Springfield Baseball to discuss the start of our local uh, youth season, which is scheduled for April 10th. And um, as I, I, you know, I, I assume you all probably know, we, we have a yearly um, uh, opening day parade or event uh, focused primarily around Rosner Field and the streets around it, um, where you know the kids get together with their parents, walk down the street together, everybody ends up at Rosner for some food, uh, music, pictures, and some on-field baseball and softball activities. So uh, I'm here tonight because we'd like to do something similar this year. Um, we understand it's not a normal year and that um, we wouldn't be proceeding as normal. But um, we would like to do something, and I'm, I'm seeking the committee's support to do that. So that brings me to what, uh, what do we envision? Uh, and it, as, as I and, and my board have uh, thought it through, uh, what we have is some type of parade or some type of uh, organized uh, uh, march or parade with uh, masks and social distancing, of course, uh, followed by music, maybe maybe pre-prepared food instead of food cooked directly on site, handed out, um, maybe some attractions. Like someone mentioned the ice cream truck earlier, that was something we had thought of, so someone stole my thunder, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> an on-stage performance of some type, I, I mean, for the little kids, a musician or a balloon, uh, you know, act, you know, guy or something like that. Um, obviously, um, the issue is COVID, and, um, and it's obviously a, a big issue. Uh, but we do see that the governor's daily updates um, show that COVID positive tests are decreasing at the same time that um, uh, you know at the same time that vaccination rates are increasing. So. We do have a softening of restrictions across the country and an increase in permissible activities. In addition to what we've learned about the transmission of COVID, which is that it is, um, it is uh, many, multi many multiples safer uh, to do outdoor activities than it is to do something indoor. Um, so locally, I, I, you know, I understand that other activities have been allowed to proceed. There's a food truck event that I've been told about and, and other events and <coughs> schools are opening back up. And so in that vein, we feel like uh, an opening day parade or, or celebration of some type fits. Um, and finally, we really just need, we, we believe, I guess as a board, that the kids need something to do outside. Um, I can speak from personal experience. The children have been home for a year, tucked away on their electronic devices uh, for school, for entertainment, for everything. There's uh, an aspect of isolation and depression that sets in. That type of thing. And it's good to note um, that many experts have, have opined that the emotional impact of COVID is just as bad as, as some of the physical uh, aspects of it. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know what we're allowed to do, um, and, and that's still a work in progress. But I, I do want to, uh, to come here tonight and say that we'd like to do something. We understand it might be circumscribed by COVID, um, and we're going to figure that out. But I did want to, to come before the committee, uh, see, uh, take the temperature yep. of, uh, of, of you all and see uh, 
whether we'd be in a position to, uh, to proceed with, uh, you know, trying to work, work something together for the kids on April 10th. All right, so let's, because uh, I'm glad we, we, we're, we have to talk about this, so let's, All right. you want to start, Rich? Um, first of all, how many kids are you talking about, 200 kids? Well, our total registration is about 200. How right. many kids would come to any given event? I don't know. All right, but 200 kids, and in school, they are uh, divided by dividers. I know middle school has to carry them, and the, the Caldwell, they're on the desk, permanent, whatever they are. You give me 50 kids, they're not going to stay apart. They're going to be right next to each other. They're not going to stay six feet apart. Um, I've talked to the police chief about this. Mm -hmm. Police chief and I have talked. He was even hesitant about it. I mean, I could see something maybe will go toward the end of the season and try at the end of the season trying to get all the kids with softball and, and baseball together and do something at the end of the year. Because right now it's so we don't know everything that's going to happen. We don't. Nobody can predict anything. What the governor is going to say, anything like that. I'm just very hesitant. Is, is that before, before um, spring break or after? Eight days after. Eight days after. I know. And I'm just saying that you got the spring break, and then you got this coming. I would, I would, in my opinion, I don't think it should happen on the 10th. Middle of the season, maybe? We used to have an all years ago on, I think, Memorial Day. We were Memorial Day, right, John? Memorial Day. We used to have, we used to, yeah. That's sorry. not a bad idea, like an all star weekend. Like an all star weekend. And maybe Memorial Day we could have something. Like, <laughs> they used to march down. Matter of fact, they come years ago. It was down Mars Avenue, and all the way down Mountain Avenue. Horse and buggy, though, for him. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean years ago. I mean, I mean, it used to happen. I mean, I could see that, and I understand. I mean, I'm a grandparent. You know, I'm a, as many as I can go. Linda goes to her grandkids. I mean, it's just that I think it's unsafe at April 10th because we're just starting to break out of it. I mean, that's my opinion. Thank you, Kamima. I, I think he, you, everybody here makes some valid points. I mean, unfortunately, the, the rate of transmission is going up again for some strange reason. I don't know how much that impacts with kids. I know that my daughter plays club sports, and they've been playing for a while indoors, but no parents around, so it's a small number, but it's indoors. So, like, I feel like a, with a lot of these discussions, I don't want to be a hypocrite because my kid is playing sports, but it's not 200 people in one space at a time even though it's outdoors and the seasons are definitely allowed like we're starting softball we're starting practices and everything i know it's kids so it's probably less of a struggle but i don't know is there going to be a limit on how many family members can come because are you saying 200 kids baseball and softball combined i'm assuming right that's not just baseball well, no, is it 200 that's, that's baseball all right so softball softball's got a lot if we're doing combined speaking as yeah. there's there's easily oh, there's big numbers of softball now and i don't want to eliminate anybody by no, making a statement i the softball parents are watching you know i'm one of you so there's 100 of you you know softball. there's probably more i think there's more but that's 300 300 kids if they all come and then parents and family members and stuff so i know it's outside so i don't know it's it's a tough alex when's the end of the season uh, the end of the season would, would likely be, uh, the schedule isn't finalized yet, but the beginning to uh, maybe first or second week of June. Mm. First or second week of June. And everything that I think we're hearing is from Biden is that by the end of May, every, yeah. every adult who wants a vaccine can get a vaccine. You're right. Um, okay. So, I, I mean, I think April 10th is also a little too early. Um, I think we can have definitely have an end of the season celebration. It's not like we're ending the season. They're still going to be playing outdoors uh, uh, and we'll play a full season. But at the end of the season, it might be a little more manageable uh, and a little bit more uh, 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 back to normalcy to allow 200 plus kids plus their parents and grandparents who all want to see them on, on parade day, I just don't think is, is the best thing to do eight days after spring break. Because let's be honest, I think some people are going to take advantage and go away after, after a year of being inside and use this spring break to potentially go back and then to 
potentially bring that back. We still don't know, even if you have a vaccine, if it's able to be spread. And I just don't think that's the wisest thing. I think if you're telling me that it's two weeks into June, at the end of the season, with May being the end date of most adults getting vaccinated, I think that's a more manageable thing from my perspective. Chris? Yeah, you know, well, first of all, thank you very much for, for coming to our meeting tonight. Yeah, thank you for hanging out and waiting as long as you did. This is one, one of our longer meetings, but it's, it's glad to see you in person instead of over uh, Zoom. Uh, and full disclosure, my son uh, is involved in baseball, and we just got a communication that he made the travel team for baseball, so we're quite excited. Yes. Christopher, I'm talking about you. I don't know what the camera <laughs> He's not watching. No, he's not watching. He's <laughs> his sister. Um, and I, to be honest with you, I knew this topic was coming up, and I, I, I was kind of back and forth with it. You know, I, I do believe the kids need something, and I do believe some type of tradition needs to continue. But I, I believe with uh, Commander and Kaiser, I don't really think um, that, that something beforehand or before the season w would be the best option, in my opinion. Um, you know, I, not only do I have the, 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 the hat of a, the ball cap, if you will, of a parent, I also have the ball cap of an educator, and I have an educator who's up here as well. And, you know, for, for, for things as dangerous as spring breaks and, and people going away and having that option, I think that's just, to, even if we required all participants to fill out a form to participate in the parade as they would going to school, I think that just leaves a lot of questions, a lot of options. And unfortunately, in a time like this, where we need the most patience because we're almost through, everybody's run out of it. So I do think that an end of the year celebration parade, if you want to keep the tradition, would be more appropriate than something beforehand. Because not only that, and, and, and as my colleague said up here before about the vaccinations and the availability of it, I think the door might be open a little bit more wider to those on-field events that I've been to and love with the, with the, with the games and the carnivals and, the, and those things of that nature. I think that would be a little bit harder to do in the spring as opposed to the beginning of the summertime. Um, so if you're willing to be flexible and you know meet us halfway on some things, I think we could have some type of celebration but I would, I would prefer to be at an end of the year celebration than an opening for And one last thing, I think we all can agree on this. We will make that end of the year celebration kick. But uh, full disclosure, I'm planning an event for my daughter who's turned 16 and her birthday's in April, but because of everything, we're pushing it back till the end of May as well. So like we're, so I feel we're like, and I don't want to come off as a hypocrite, but like I'm torn because, like I said, I'm a softball parent. I'm this. It's outside, but the numbers and God forbid something happens, then yeah, I, I just you know just from my yeah. perspective, I do feel like the reality on the ground is a little bit different than this. People are out. People are doing. Yeah. That. When I drove by, both softball fields were full. Um, you know, I just I, it, we talk about spring break, but the kids are going to go right back into school which is indoors. But they're going, are, are they going right back after spring break or is there going to be a 14 day window? I'm not, I don't remember. I, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know about that. I haven't heard anything. But, yeah, but even know. with that case, yeah, you want that. schools to, right. we, we yeah. want schools to uh, certainly function and work. Yeah, we yeah. don't want to add to the stress of that and potentially yeah. it's it's have a super spreader event. And then we'll, all schools are out for then yeah. 14 days. I hear you. I'm just, no. you know, yeah. my perspective. That's yeah. Right. So, I, I'm with you. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking that, you know, opening season, you let it go. And uh, he, here's my question. Opening season, opening day was scheduled for when? Scheduled for Saturday, April 10th. Okay, so we got 410. End of season is when? Most likely. Around the first. Of the year. Most second. likely the first or second week in June. So let's just say 6-7. Or we'll say six ten. Make it easy, right in the middle. Um, so, Rich, you know, I didn't think of the All Star thing, and uh, I didn't think of it either until you know, when different. he mentioned it. Uh, so, because your your actually situation is tying in with a pool opening, Memorial Day parade. You know, we've got a bunch of things we've got to discuss because because life has to go on and things have to open up again. So I was 100% after talking to you, 
I was full steam ahead, ready to let them go in March and, and go. Yeah, we spoke too. And, and I yeah. spoke to Erica and, and so we, it's we hard. were divided Decisions up Decisions are not yeah. easy. Like, we, we talked a lot. We spoke for like an hour. Like I really. knew that it was going to be a, a, a th if we were going to go on voting, I know it was going to be three to two that we were going to, her and I were on a different because we go to game to game, and we're, we're we're in it right now. And I wake up at six in the morning to get to practices on Sunday, so I'm there. I welcome, get it. Welcome to the club. Yeah, exactly. After hearing from from the other four now, I I have to say that I'm willing to change my mind at this point and go, hey, you know, I I don't really want to cram everything into the end of the season. Truthfully, I think there's a lot happening there between Memorial Day and the parade, and and people wanting to just get out. I do like this all-star thing in, in May, if, if you want to explore that. Yeah, I'd have to take that back to my group. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the girls could have, and I don't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. The girls used to have a softball all-star teams at your fields, you know, the fields they used to have. The, the boys go uh, to Irwin or whatever, the, what's it called? Rosner. Rosner. <laughs> Rosner now. I mean, and they do a parade. You could have a parade just come down Mountain Avenue. To town hall and I've always said we should do an all-star weekend and have like skills competitions and home run derbies like do that and we never do that in either league I don't well, think unless well, the boys do you it. know it's up to whatever they can do go back to your my condition yeah go, no uh, go back to your committee tell them what you heard here mm -hmm. and then see if they're interested in like an all-star weekend I know you have all-star uh, I know there's games going on you know there's uh, travel the teams yeah. The travel teams have tournaments that weekend. Things like that. See what we could do. I mean, that's only my suggestion. No, I, I, after so I, I, I'm I'm shifting April's gears a little so bit, not to head. not to catch you off, I'm, no, I, but I am head. shifting gears a little bit. Where, again, I was full steam ahead. Now I'm 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 pulling back a little. I bit. I didn't think about the spring break. Yeah, I didn't that's think that's about that either. That's I, you me know. too. I was I was I was not. Totally aware of the number, and again, I, we appreciate your transparency on this. I was not totally aware of the number. I was forgetting the spring break thing too, so I was that kind of got me, caught me by surprise, and that's kind of where I was a little wishy-washy. But yeah, these are these are things that's uh, definite factors to think about for sure. How, how about I can promise you this then? <laughs> Let, let's work on something. You talk to let, let's let's continue to, to work on this. We'll give you anything you need. We'll, we'll make whatever we need to happen happen. Later April 10th is a little too early right now. I'll side with everybody else on this. But if we can figure something out, maybe th just 30 days later in the middle or, or wherever, we will do whatever we have to do to make this happen. I'll go back and talk to my group, as uh, uh, Committee uh, and uh, Uber said, and, and take their temperature on what they'd like to do. And right. they heard uh, what we heard. And please, I know and people are going to be frustrated, but it's really hard for us, too, because we're all involved. To, you know, we're all yeah, in the same boat. Right. It's, it's just hard because, God forbid, you know, something I'd happens. like you to get in touch with, I don't know who's the president of your oh. league. Oh, no, me. I don't know. <laughs> well, whoever's the president of softball, no. they have to talk to your people, and you you bring it back I to don't the have any people, Rich. And, and sit down and, and work out a date. Because this way, because there used to be softballs here and baseball. Yeah, we'd like them together also. We'll bring them together. Yeah. But we'll yeah. help, any, like, seriously, all any, of us. Anyway. Yeah. You know. You, now you, yeah, actually, now you have, you got four of us out here. we got a grandkids, daughter, daughter, and son now who are all involved yeah. in this. Sounds good. So we're committed to it. We just um, have to make it a little more. Okay. And, and I just want to, one more thing with, with the food and the bouncy houses and stuff like that. The bouncy houses were scrapped. We're, we're done with that? They, they, okay. They were scrapped, yeah. Uh, the, if you can get a dunk tank, they can dunk me. That's fine. Uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll do that. For, yeah. I would, you well, know, the food lot, thing we talked about, uh, you know, if I can go anywhere right now and get served a hot dog with gloves and a mask on, um, I guess we could talk to the our, our health officer on it and see it, what, what he's recommending. Right. But We were uh, thinking of, you know, like, from a local restaurant, right. pre prepared, pre wrapped in aluminum foil, just hand them out, not cook them. Yeah, that's side. smart. That okay, then, well, we're, we're with you. Just let's shape this thing a little bit better. Sounds good. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Um, next, anybody? Oh, come on up, Hope. Speaking of good food. <laughs>
In the microphone, you got to speak. Uh, Hope Rosenberg, 22 Woodside Road. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Rotary Club of Springfield and the PTSO of Jonathan Day. Hey, Mike, see you. Yes. Um, we are at a, a crossroads, so I am coming to you, but before that, on a lighter note, I am here to thank Linda Donnelly and um, many, many, many people that work throughout the town hall that have guided me and helped me um, putting this project together. It's been a two-year project. Wow. Yeah. Um, but I need a clearer understanding before we make our final commitment as to what the true definition of a gathering is. <laughs> For the food truck festival. Right. What day is it planned on? April 25th, right? April 25th. Now, this, the way that we have it set up, and I can supply you all with um, the site plans, operation plans, so on and so forth, because they've all been approved by uh, Jonathan Dayton, yeah. uh, superintendent, and Matt Clark, which was a major breakthrough. <laughs> are, they are they allowing on-field? Um, it's actually, oh, it's all gonna be fenced in toward the back end of the uh, parking lot, like from the tennis courts back, but only on the McAdam. All the other, okay. So we have 15 plus food trucks signed up. 15? Well, we, it can hold up to 18. Really, I, Social yeah, distancing. Yeah. Um, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> um, I need um, some sort of definition of what we're allowed what gathering to do. means, because this is actually going to be set up as an outdoor food court. So people are going to come in, their temperatures are going to be checked, Masks are required. There will be markers by each truck, so there's six feet um, distance as they wait. Um, we will. Um, we have counters at every every at the entrance at the exit. It's a split open field. I mean, two um, two areas. So there's a pass through. So uh, we will always know how many people are are on the grounds. Have How you guys communicated with uh, our health department at all? I guess they well, would have to make Scott, that decision. I reached out to Scott Seidel today mm -hmm. because I had a meltdown. <laughs> and he um, did send um, an email to Scott. Who did you say? Mike, Mike Fitzpatrick. Okay. The health yeah. officer. So I think that's the person that would have to uh, make the determination. I will tell you that the town administrator in Melbourne approved a food truck fest music and food truck festival to Taylor Park. That's happening on sept on um, Saturday, the twenty fourth of April. Can I ask you a question, Linda? Did they need any permits, like for the vendors or anything? Um, I yes. believe Mary Ellen. Mary oh, Ellen. Ellen. Uh, oh, yes. Okay. The, but yes. that's correct me if I'm wrong. Then that's the extent of the township's really involvement in it. Right. This is on school property. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you, I would think that the governor could say. And you said how many like whatever it is, I don't you know, but with all the food trucks. Correct. And that I think the governor is saying that you can have 50% of the people, you know, it's just say it can hold yeah. four, 300 people. I think it's like 35, but this is outdoors, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is yeah. outdoors. I, this I is a but I think in and out, in and out, yeah. 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 It, yeah. I think to Mr. Basicolo's point was. It's not our. Call. You know, we can have this conversation all we want, but it might be meaningless because I think the proper entity for a question like this, since it's on Board of Ed property, would be the Board of Education. But don't. A, but for for all of that, for all the food right. trucks, I, I know for St. James Fair, any food that's served there and all that, the Board of Health has to come and approve it. Correct. And they've yeah, already they gotten their. their oh, they, well, and that's it. Now, huh? when the food trucks are there. Yes. The Board of Health. Well, then, right. no. Check. Yeah. Right. Whoever yeah. is, whatever, right. you yeah. said someone is running this. Right, Main Street Fairs. Main Street Fairs. They are the ones who then apply for the food license for the trucks. Yeah. Well, each food license, each food truck that is committed to Main Street Fairs will supply 
um, they will contact the town, they will get the permit, and then everything goes through a mainstream right. there. Right. So the, if I could, Mayor, just for a second. Yes, please. The, it sounds to me, and this is the first that I've heard about this, so I, I'm, I'm just kind of yes. getting up to speed. But it sounds to me like you know the issue, you know, the, the licensing of food trucks or the inspections, the, the health issues, it's kind of a separate issue from the gathering issue that, that um, the speaker is talking about. That might be an issue of enforcement ultimately for the town, but it's a threshold issue, I think, it sounds like to me, for the Board of Ed, whether they're going to approve this event or not. And Part of that is going to be dictated by the executive orders that are in effect in some ways now, but also on the date of the event. And that month. could change between now and then. The board of it could change every week. So if, if the Board of Ed's already approved it, uh, then it, again, it may be a, it might wind up being, could potentially be an enforcement issue to the extent that the township would need to get involved at the time. But it, it's helpful to know what the, I, th I think, what the projections are, what the, you know, and what the, um, Sort of what the dimensions are right. in this enclosed yeah, area. Yeah, is there going to be? Like are the, where are they eating at? Is there, are there tables there? Or are they? We will have high top tables, um, but it's it's basically to eat and go. If we have to remove the high top tables, they're out of here. If I can just have an open space, yeah. I'm doing this to help the PTSO yeah. Yeah. because the seniors got. I, don't, I can't even go into it, but sure. they probably they had, had a lot of last trouble. Year. Yeah. Ultimately, trying to do they had a rough year. I sure. built a bridge between Rotary and the high school, and that's very important I'm, to me. I'm, I'm very envious. I'm very envious of this endeavor. I think that what you're doing is awesome, and I think, Mr. Mayor, if I could suggest that maybe perhaps Mr. Dowd, Mr. Basicolo, reach out to the school board and their entity and their attorney to kind of work out the guidelines between both entities of who's responsible for what, and then they could get back to Ms. Rosenberg as applicable as to both the health department concerns and also what, what she brings to the, to the table with her concerns about the gatherings. I you think know, that might be the most appropriate yeah. way to go to talk about this a little bit offline, you know, if I could suggest. You know, when you just brought up, Union Town, Union has it every Every week. Thursday. Every yeah. Thursday. Kind of town hall, there's food trucks. There's oh, they're food doing trucks that again. There. Yeah. I yeah, so like I mean, lobster. I, I don't see anyone with the food truck. Yeah. Right. It's just that the, the amount of people that are going to be, I don't you know, I don't know what should be done. The, 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 the presumption is that the, you know, that the, the organizer and the, the host, well, which in this case, in some ways, is I think the, the, the the Board of Education is going to ensure. No, it's, it's, it's not the Board of Education. Well, it's the Rotary that's holding all the liability insurance for the event. Right. So, but, so where are you hitting a roadblock right now? Are you? Yeah, are you that, just, that, that's my question. Yeah, no, I'm wondering, have you hit one or are you just making sure to have all your ducks in a row just in case? Because, no? I wanted to thank, first, yeah. Donnelly for the guidance. She, she's been incredible. And everybody else, DPW, everybody. But, so I thought it would be nice for somebody to come in and say. Oh, definitely. No, I just didn't know if there was something specific. Oh, oh yeah. No, I, I oh, thought you were hitting a roadblock. I didn't know yeah, if, no, you no, were, no. if you were hitting a roadblock that we needed help with. I a better understanding. Uh, yeah. Oh, I okay. Know that, you know, I know Chris and, and, and Chris both are on top of what's going on with COVID and, and oh, the, gotcha, so gotcha. on and so forth. So I just want, because I scoured for two days the internet and there is no, no specific numbers it just gotcha. really gathering. might i suggest one thing that maybe you could do like that i've been at other outdoor things not food trucks but i, I was at one uh like sports related thing and they had like a social distancing liaison a, a person that just walked around and made sure people so maybe you just have somebody that walks around that. yeah okay so then yeah i think <laughs> I think Mike Fitzpatrick is probably the best yeah. Yeah. source yeah. of information. Okay. Well, sure. we'll have to wait to hear back from him. Yeah. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're looking forward thank to your Thank you for your hard work in yes. doing that. Yeah, we're, we're all looking forward to this. Event, so That's awesome. Awesome. Sounds I delicious. Be here, but it'll keep going no, we're awesome. looking I forward to But I hope you're cooking, too. Do you have a truck? No. Oh, come no, on. No, empanada uh, truck? Whoa, 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 whoa. All right. Okay. Cool. Um, that sounds like fun. <laughs> what date is it? 25th. 25th. So my birthday? Do I get a birthday? Oh, oh, oh nice. boy. Could he cancel the 25th uh, and make it another day? <laughs> look who's turning 21. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, you know, moving on with that, I had planned to talk about the pool opening, but we all know the pool is going to be opening. 
I don't have any other info on it right now, but it will be opening. Um, one way or another. One way or another. That's Excellent. Right. That's it. I, I went over that with Adam and John today. <laughs> yeah. So, so I don't have any more info on it. Um, does anybody else have anything else? No. This is a thorough meeting tonight. No, except the fact that we, boy, do we know how to clear a room. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do oh, we have good. anyone on? Uh... It was good seeing everyone. Yeah. Glad yeah, we're here. back. No, do we have anybody on? Uh... Mark, you hung tight to the end. Video? No, Questions? no. It's only phone or, for, or live. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Nobody on the phone. Um, Adjournment? I like, That's yeah, it. I'll second that. Make a motion to adjourn? Yep. Second. Woo!